Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. You're going to love this video. No one, what is myostatin? This is a gene, right? So gene calls for the protein of myostatin. And this is all you need to know, right? I'm going to skip a lot of details to keep it as short as possible, right? Let me set this fucking timer. Number one, it fucks up your satellite cell activation. If you watch my videos, you know I'm big on satellite cells and their contribution to muscle growth. It fucks up protein synthesis. It fucks up your insulin sensitivity. It gives you type 2 diabetes and shit, right? It increases your protein breakdown, which leads to obviously muscle loss. It prevents hyperplasia, and it pretty much it's pretty much the reason for the three grams rule. I made a video about this years ago, where if your body synthesized three grams of protein a day, right, new protein a day, you would put on a pound of muscle each month. And obviously, a lot of us eat 150 to even 300 grams of protein a day, but none of us are putting on a pound of muscle a month. Why is that? Even though we only need three grams of protein, why is that? Myostatin is 90% responsible for that. And I made a video about that years ago. You guys go check it out. So let's get to it, right? I'm going to show you some low myostatin examples. So this is what happens, right? West Africans are actually genetically predisposed to having myostatin mutations, right? So they have uh, either low myostatin or they have mutations of the myostatin gene, which is why West Africans and West African descendants, which are African Americans, are this fucking jack. It has nothing to do with fucking slavery because even the people... Uh, Sub-Saharan Africans who are never involved in slavery still have this uh, phenomenon. And again, it's not all West Africans, it's just the biggest majority of them. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of studies on that, you could look it up. Except me, of course, because I just happen to have the worst fucking West African genetics ever. Next, yeah, so if you're ever wondering why black people get so jacked out of fucking nowhere. And if you if you visit Africa, you know what I'm talking about. You, know, you go to West Africa, you're going to see some jack motherfuckers who never lifted a weight in their fucking life. Next up is mutant kids. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the documentaries. Um, a lot of these guys that were pretty much born with low myostatin or myostatin deficiencies. You got the baby on the left side, which fucking jacked the shit. Look at his calves. Look at his quads. You know, only in, only seven months old. And you got the kid on the right. Uh, this was, I think he was a Russian kid, somewhere in, somewhere in the Russian area. Jacked as fuck, same day, my statin deficiency. And there's a bunch of them, you know, just go online and, and look it up. Next up, you got mutant rats, right? They had, they're being genetically engineered to have low myostatin. Look at the one on the left compared to the one on the right, both the same age. Obviously, one is a lot more jacked than the other one. Mutant bulls, right? This is the famous um, Belgian blue bull. This is not Photoshop. They are jacked than a motherfucker. Again, when your myostatin is low, your muscles just fucking grow. They just fucking grow, right? That's what my stand does. It stops your muscles from growing, from getting too big. So it has nothing to do with training. It has nothing to do with whatever. You could just, if you have low myostatin, you could just sit on your ass all day and your muscles will just fucking grow. Next up, you got mutant dogs. Again, look at the difference here. Now, let's look at some high myostatin examples. What happens when you have high levels of myostatin? Women have higher levels of myostatin than men. They also have a lot more, up to twice as many myostatin receptors as men do, which is why it doesn't matter how hard a woman trains, how much testosterone she takes, she would never put on the same amount of muscle. Pretty much, if you take the, the woman with the best muscle building genetics on the planet, and you also take the guy with the best muscle building genetics, the guy will always be bigger, right? And it's not just testosterone, because even if she injects a lot of testosterone, she would never be able to put on as much size as that guy on the same thing. So it's myostatin that plays the biggest role. Next, old people, when people age, their myostatin levels go up, you know, which obviously reduces the amount of muscle mass, even if they keep training. And obviously, hormones play a part as well. Astronauts, when they go in space and come back, they lose a lot of fucking size. You know, it's a very, very big issue, and they try to exercise while they're in space, you know, because myostatin goes through the roof when you um, when you suspend it, you know, when, it's, when you're in a low-gravity environment. South Asians, they genetically have lower myostatins or myostatin mutations, um, relative to the rest of the population, where the myostatins, uh, sorry, they're actually higher than most of the population, which is why it's very hard for South Asians um, to put on size. And again, this is just, you know, in, in general, right? You're always going to have outliers that are able to put on mass. But if you were wondering why is it that South Asians, you know, are naturally skinny and have low body mass, lean body mass, myostatin plays a huge role. And this has been researched. You can look it up. Bad ridden. People in cast, wheelchairs, same thing, right? If you've been battering for a long time, the reason why your legs shrink is because your myostatin levels go through the fucking roof. If you put on a cast or if you're on a wheelchair, same thing happens. Now, the 10 fastest ways to lower myostatin. Let's go over them. 
One, you got phyllostatin. And again, same thing, just like myostatin. It's a gene, right, that calls for a protein. And what that protein does is it attaches to myostatin, and it stops myostatin from binding to its own receptors. So long story short, it's the number one inhibitor of myostatin. Number two, yeah, you fucking guessed it. Nucleus fucking overload. Nucleus overload lowers myostatin. Why? Because the more frequently you train, the pretty much the, the drop in myostatin after after a workout only lasts for about eight to twelve hours for most people. The longer you've been training, same thing. Which is one of the reasons why protein synthesis also uh, uh, peaks within the twenty four hour period if you advance. Uh, mechanical growth factor, you know, which is a variant of IGF one. Same thing. It's one of the biggest uh, inhibitors of myostatin. They have the, you know uh, competing uh, mechanisms on, on the human body, and they also peak about 12 to 24 hours after you train. So after you work out, you get the, you get a huge drop in myostatin. And within 8 to 12 hours, it's back to baseline. So you got to train frequently to keep those levels low, which is why nucleus of a little works so fucking well, you know. And it's funny, everybody's fucking talking about high-frequency training now. Get the fuck out of here. Next, uh, full-body workouts, right? Studies have been, you know, studies have been done on this. Full-body training gives you a bigger reduction in myostatin than just doing a split routine or just training your lower body. In fact, uh, it's in order. Number one is full body training. Number two, lower body trainings. If you train legs and stuff like that, you get a huge drop in myostatin. And last place is if you just train your upper body. So it's in that specific order. So if you want the biggest drop in myostatin, you got to do full body workouts. And I've been preaching about this shit for fucking years. And I love that the science is coming out now to confirm it. N next, eccentrics are very high volume. So if you're doing heavy negatives, heavy eccentrics, I made a video on that. You're going to get a bigger drop in uh, myostatin than if you were just doing concentrics. Now, if you equate the volume, so if you uh, lift more weights and do double the volume on your concentrics, then you're able to match that myostatin drop, right? So it's one or the other. Don't try to do both. You're either going to do eccentrics or you do very high volume on the concentrics for your myostatin levels to drop. Anabolic hormones. Hey, I'm not talking about steroids, even though steroids, you know, are anabolic hormones and they do lower myostatin. You guys know I fucking hate steroids. So when I say anabolic hormones, I mean naturally. So try to optimize your testosterone levels, your IGF-1, mechanical growth factor, growth hormone, all of that good shit. So don't, don't let nobody tell you that with making progress in the natural range um, um, is not going to make a change for your physique. That's complete bullshit. It does have a carryover as long as it's significant. Next, lactic acid. More and more research is coming out showing that lactic acid from obviously training your fast twitch muscles, feeling the burn, whatever, actually leads to a huge drop in myostatin. So the bros were right all a fucking long. And Tom Platt, who has obviously one of the, the best legs, if not the best legs in bodybuilding history, was very big on maximizing that pain, maximizing that, that lactic acid. And of course, you know, he had the best legs in the history of the sport. And I don't want to fucking hear steroids because not everybody on steroids had Tom Plass legs. And don't measure genetics either because if you look at his genetics before he started lifting, they were nowhere, nowhere indicative of uh, the physique that he built. Um, so, yeah, so lactic acid increases phyllostatin, lowers myostatin. Next, higher protein diet has been shown to lower myostatin, mainly leucine, right? So it has to be a diet high in leucine, obviously eggs, you know, stuff like that, um, whey protein. Next, caffeine has been shown by research to lower my, uh, myostatin or improving the phyllostatin to myostatin ratio. Creatine has been shown uh, several times to lower myostatin. Epicathenin, I can't pronounce this shit. Epicathenin, whatever. Uh, but this one is actually new. There's a lot of more research coming out on this, so I'll be a lot more skeptical because it's, it's fairly new. But it's been shown to uh, lower myostatin as well. And it's mainly found in dark chocolate and green tea. So conclusion, my stand is bad. You want to lower that bitch. How do you do it? Train more frequently, full body workouts, focus on the negatives, or do very high volume. Go for the burn. Optimize your hormones. Pretty much your recovery is what's going to help you optimize your hormones. So sleep, eat, you know, stuff like that. Uh, stress management. Eat a high protein diet. Supplement with creatine, caffeine, or if you're ballsy, a pick up bullshit, whatever. Now, I'm not saying that's going to give you a Kevin Lavoni physique, but I had to put something out there. So, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I like the goddamn video. Subscribe to my shit. Hit the bell. Email me for one-on-one -on -one coaching, HSP training programs, or meal plans. All subscribers get 40% off. Hit me up, especially if you're skinny as shit or fat as fuck. I'm out of here, guys.